I here's a here's an interesting problem from a Praxis two test on trigonometry. This is uh, from the Praxis two for the zero zero six one test, the math content test, and I, and this is an important question because um, it reminds us that we need to know the idea of the half angle formulas for trigonometry. And half angles uh, definitely relate to bisectors, and that's what we have in this question is a bisector. So what we have in the xy plane, an acute angle with a vertex at the origin is formed by the positive x-axis and the line with the equation y equals 3x. What is the slope of the line that contains the bisector of this angle? All right, we're going to break this problem down. We have the xy plane, All right, here's y, here's x, and we have an acute angle with vertex at the origin. So it's formed by the positive x-axis, so right here, this blue part, right, that's the positive x-axis, this is, this is the negative x-axis, and the equation for the line y equals 3x, something like that. So there's y equals 3x, equals 3x, and this is the positive component of the line x, y equals 0, right? Just the, the positive component of that. What is the slope of the line that contains the bisector of this angle? So what is the bisector, right? It's this line right here that splits um, the total angle in half. So if I drew a point up here, right, and a point down here to form a triangle, and I connected these dots, let's use green, right, connect these dots right here, I've got my triangle. It's going to be a right triangle the way I'm going to set it up. Um, we, we can use trig functions to find the lengths of these sides, but we're really focusing on the fact that we want half of this angle right here. Excuse me, half of this half of this angle here. We want to find this little angle. Which is and that makes sense, right? Because altogether, whatever this angle is, the bisector will cut it right in half. So how do we do that? Well, one important thing to focus on is this whatever the slope of this line is, it's gotta be represented by the tangent function. Right? So tangent of, of theta or whatever. Tangent of theta, excuse me. And this we'll call this angle theta right here. So we want to find half of that, we've got to use the half angle formulas. And really the way I go about doing this is um, dealing with the fact that tangent is slope because it's equal to sine over cosine, which is really like y over x, which is slope. And uh, I'm going to label these points. Now to get me started. This point right here, let's call it 1, 3. I'm just plugging that into this formula. We plug in x for 1 and get a y of 3. This point down here, to make sure it's, it's, this is a vertical perpendicular line to the x-axis, it's going to be 1, 0. So we're right below it. So now, to kind of figure out what's happening, right? if this is 1, 0, the length of this line is 1. If this is 1, 3, the height is 3. And um, I, I, was, I was definitely stuck when I first looked at this problem because I, kind of, I wasn't really sure to, where to go from here. I was ready to find a tangent, but then how do you really split this angle in half? Um, and we're not going to get too much into why the half angle formulas make sense in this video, but we are going to talk about how to apply them. The idea is that at the tangent of theta, right, tangent of theta, what's that going to be equal to? Well, we're really looking at, at the tangent of theta as this whole angle right here. We want to cut it in half. Well, let's think of it as the sine, right, the sine, we're looking at the sine function here, of Let's call this angle um, A, B, C, right? The sine of angle A, B, C cut in half over 2, right? Over the cosine of angle A, B, C over 2. And, and that, that's just saying that we're looking for the tangent of theta, Right? That's going to be equal to sine of ABC over 2 and cosine of ABC over 2. Um, oh, excuse me. Well, if, if, look, sorry. If we're looking for the tangent of theta, that's, that's this whole angle. We're looking for the tangent of theta over 2. Right? We're looking for it in half. We're cutting it in half as a bisector. So that's going to be equal to the sine of ABC over 2 over the cosine of ABC over 2. And actually, on the, on, the, on the praxis test, they give us the actual formulas to deal with this, the shortcuts. 
And for the sine of angle ABC over 2, that's going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus the cosine of angle ABC, right? Angle ABC over 2. And the cosine, right, the cosine of angle ABC over 2 is going to be equal to the square root of 1 plus the cosine of ABC over 2. And now we've just got to simplify that. And let's make a new window for that and come back to this one. This is a long problem. Um, we're going to cut through it though. So we have the, the square root of 1 minus the cosine of angle ABC over 2 over the square root of 1 plus the cosine of angle ABC over 2. Well, whenever you want to get rid of the radical here in the denominator, an easy way to do that is to multiply both numerator and denominator by 1 as long as we have a radical, right? So I'm going to multiply it by the radical sign of, of this denominator to get rid of it. Because if you remember, the square root of something times the square root of itself gets rid of the square root sign. Let's just talk about that for one second. Square root of 25, right? Well, what's the square root of 25 times the square root of 25? That's just 25, because the square root of each of these is 5, and together get 25. So the square root of a times the square root of a is just a. And that's what we're doing here, because we want to get rid of, of the radical sign here. So let me go back and write this out. Okay. So, over 2, and the square root of 1 plus the cosine of angle ABC over 2. What's going to happen now? Well, um, in the denominator, right, we're just going to be left with 1 plus the cosine of angle ABC over 2. And in the numerator, right, what's going to happen now? Well, we have to do a little bit of maneuvering here. If you think of the square root of A times B, that's going to be equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. So for example, if I have the square root of 100, right, we can think of, well, that's not a helpful example, I'm sorry. Actually, that's fine. It's fine. Square root of 100, that equals the square root of 10 times 10, which equals the square root of 10 times the square root of 10. And what's the square root of 10 times the square root of 10? Well, we just established that. That's just 10. And that makes sense, right? The square root of 100 equals 10. So this works. We're going to use that fact here. Well, so since we're multiplying all this stuff, right, we're starting with this, and we're going this way. So that means that I can think of this as the square root of 1 minus the cosine of angle ABC. I'm going to stop writing that angle sign times 1 plus the cosine of angle a ABC over 4. What's this going to be? Well, well, 1, right? Think of this distributive property here. Oops, sorry. I'm going to draw these parentheses in. How do we evaluate this? Well, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times cosine of a, ABC is cosine of ABC, but then minus cosine of ABC times 1 cancels that out. And then we have minus the cosine squared of angle ABC. And, and we're taking the square root of that, right? But the square root of 4, what's that? Well, that's just 2. So we can pull that out of the, the radical. And now we have this, much friendlier to deal with. Let me get rid of this right here. So, so what do we do now? Well, there's lots of stuff we can do, but uh, what I'm going to do is multiply numerator and denominator by the, this, the reciprocal of this number right here. And that's just going to be, right, we're multiplying both 2 over 1 plus the cosine of ABC and multiplying the numerator by, oops, by 2 over 1 plus the cosine of ABC. These cancel out these cancel out, and now we have this, the square root of 1 minus the cosine squared of angle ABC over 1 plus the cosine of ABC. And what's 1 minus the cosine squared of ABC? Well, remember, that the sine squared of an angle theta plus the cosine squared of an angle theta is 1. 
which means that 1 minus the cosine of squared theta has to equal sine squared theta. So this expression right here, what's that? That's just sine squared theta. So this equals, go back to grape, the square root of sine squared theta over 1 plus the cosine of angle ABC. Oh, I'm sorry, this is angle ABC. And what's the square root of sine squared ABC? Well, that's just the sine of, of ABC over 1 plus the cosine of ABC, and we're almost there. So now what do we do? Well, what's the sine of angle of angle ABC? Well, I, I, the sine of ABC goes back to our original triangle that we set up. And let me just clear this out to show you what I mean. So we have the XY plane. I'm going to change color here. X and Y plane. And we knew that we had this line right here where y equals 3x and the positive part of the x-axis, right? We have this, this right triangle here. And then we knew that this was a distance of 1, right? Because we put this point here that was 1, 0, and this point up here, which is 1, 3. So now we can use the, this, I'm sorry, this is a height of 3, so this leg is 3. We can figure out this side by using the Pythagorean theorem, which says that 3 squared plus 1 squared is our hypotenuse squared. So what's 3 squared plus 1 squared? That's, that's 10. So the hypotenuse squared equals um, 10, but the hypotenuse equals the square root of 10. So this side right here is the square root of 10. So now what do we do? Well, now I have this formula that an angle A, B, C is here. So the sine of ABC is what? That's Sokotoa, right? We could use Sokotoa to help us through this problem, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine is 3 over radical 10. And what is, well, 1 plus the cosine of ABC. What's the cosine? That's the adjacent side here. 1 over the hypotenuse, square root of 10. So now we have, we have this formula right here. Well, now what do we do? Well, in the denominator, I think it, it might make the most sense just to multiply numerator and denominator by the by the square root of 10, I think. Because we, we want to break this down. We don't want this here. So how do we do that? Well, let's multiply everything in the denominator by the square root of 10 over the square root of 10. What's that? Well, now we have 3 over the square root of 10 over distribute this to both parts. And we get the square root of 10 over the square root of 10 plus square root of 10 over what? What's the square root of 10 times itself? That's just 10, right? So now we have this. We have square root of 10 over itself, like that. That's just 1. And now we have 1 plus the square root of 10 over 10, which is more helpful than 1 plus 1 over the square root of 10, right? That's that's not very helpful to us. And actually, I'm thinking maybe it would have been faster to do something else. Let me just go back and adjust this. Because this, this isn't, I don't like this. I think I have a quicker way of doing this part. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the numerator, actually, to help reduce the de denominator. And here's what I mean. Um, so when we set up sine and 1 plus the cosine, again, we have 3 over the square root of 10 over... 1 plus 1 over the square root of 10. Well, what if I multiply everything by by the square root of 10? Right, just the square root of 10. What am I going to get? Well, I haven't changed the equation altogether, right? Because I'm just multiplying the square root of 10 over the square root of 10 by everything. What's that going to be? Well, these two cancel out, and we get 3. Yeah, it's much nicer. And now we have the square root of 10. I'm distributing this right here. And here we'll get 1, right? The square root of 10 over 10, square root of 10 is just 1. And now we have this. And and here we want to rationalize this, so we're going to multiply by the conjugate. Square root of 10 minus 1, and then square root of 10 minus 1. So what's going to happen when we multiply these two together? Well, the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is just 10, minus the square root of 10, plus the square root of 10, minus 1. Well, these cancel out. So really we get just 10 minus 10 minus 1. Okay, so 
So now we have, almost done, here on the numerator, 3 times the square root of 10 minus 3 over 10 minus 1. And what's, and what's 10 minus 1? Well, that's just 9. And I'm going to actually I think I'm going to factor out the 3 up here. We get 3 times the square root of 10 minus 1. And 3 ninths reduces to 1 third. And we finally get our answer. The square root of 10. Oops, fix that. Square root of 10 minus 1 over 3. And I am exhausted.